Chimpanzees. Sharing over 99% of our DNA, they're our closest relatives on Earth. How did we make it from something like this to the likes of you and I? We certainly share a lot of traits with chimps. In terms of behaviour, we can both exhibit empathy towards members of our own species, respect, playfulness and cheek, and resourcefulness. They can make friends with individuals and wage wars against other troops. Physically, they have opposable thumbs like we do, and they can stand upright. As you can see here, they prefer to walk on all fours, and that was the very first step to human evolution. This is Ardipithecus. It's the earliest known member of the hominid family, dating to about 5.6 million years ago. With reduced canines, it's thought that their behaviour was more like that of the somewhat relaxed bonobo, rather than the violent, aggressive behaviour as we often see in chimps. The exact position of Ardipithecus on our family tree is still up for debate. The fossils are incomplete and its existence is so close to the ape divergence with our family that it's still unsure if it's really within our family or some other lineage of apes. Unlike chimps and bonobos, Ardipithecus habitually stood upright. You may be familiar with this, the March of Progress, originally titled Road to Homo Sapiens. This view here is actually abridged, making it look as if our ancestors were slowly becoming more upright. It was drawn in the 1960s, so naturally Ardipithecus does not appear, only having been discovered in the 1990s. But it's more telling of a subconscious attitude when talking about human evolution. It's often misinterpreted with the notion that the modern human is something of a goal of evolution, rather than one of many radiated branches. Some of the species on here are not ancestral to modern humans, and in the case of Proconsul, may not even be a true ape. Paleontology is a discipline which requires almost regular changes in attitude. Through challenging what is first accepted, then scientists can get a picture closer to the truth of the past. After Ardipithecus came the genus Australopithecus. Discovered in 1924, it took several decades for Australopithecus to be fully accepted as a human ancestor. Regarding the ecology of Australopithecus, it had a mostly herbivorous diet. Still being quite small, likely ranging from 3 to 5 feet in height at most, they would have often fallen prey to several predators. Leopards, lions, hyenas, saber-toothed cats, crocodiles and birds of prey would all have taken advantage of this vulnerable ape. Ardipithecus may have been the first of the upright hominids, and following from this, Australopithecus was the first tool-wielding hominid. Contemporaneous finds of scavenged carcasses showed that Australopithecus used tools for cutting meat off such carcasses. Further analysis of trabecular orientation on the metacarpals, effectively the way hands develop throughout life, indicate load-bearing and orientation for tool use. There's still debate about the precise nature of this tool use. Were they crafting specific tools, or simply using what they could find? It appears that the grip of Australopithecus wasn't strong enough to specifically craft a tool like later descendants, and with a brain the size of an orange, it was unlikely to have the cognitive ingenuity required to devise new tools. That being said, this ape clearly had the potential to radiate further, including the lineage that led to us. Jump forward to two million years ago, and there are four hominids living on the African savanna. Alongside Australopithecus, there was Paranthropus boisei, Homo habilis, and Homo rudolfensis. Paranthropus boisei has been nicknamed the Nutcracker Man. It was large, with powerful jaws, and possessed incredibly thick tooth enamel. With a projecting jaw and a sagittal crest, this ape likely had a diet and lifestyle like modern gorillas. As for the two homos, they were more interested in meat than Paranthropus boisei. They had developed larger brains and were less inclined to go for tough vegetation. Homo habilis was certainly capable of crafting stone tools to give itself the edge in a competitive world. Hunting is unlikely for an ape like this. They would still have been scavenging for meat and marrow, a protein resource most animals can't access. 
With specified variety in their stone tools, this indicates the beginnings of a good memory and understanding of how stones fracture. Little is truly known about Homo rudolfensis. It had a larger brain than Homo habilis and larger teeth, so it was certainly intelligent and tough enough to survive. It's not thought that Rodolfensis is an ancestor of ours, or indeed of any other species. Habilis seemed to have the edge over Boisei and Rodolfensis. With their remarkable tool-making abilities, they have even been nicknamed the Handyman. This is not to say Boisei and Rodolfensis were rubbish in their niche. It's just that to go extinct, you don't have to fail, just succeed a little less than your competitor. And eventually, even Homo habilis was outcompeted and went extinct from the competition of their own descendants. The story of human evolution will be continued in another video, so make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss that.